Coming up next, San Diego and the nation are remembering the lives lost in a shooting at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. The suspected shooter in Colorado is the grandson of East County Assemblymember Randy Vopel. I'm Steve Price. We'll tell you what else we're learning about this case. Since the pandemic, San Diego police are responding to more mental health calls at local schools. A breakdown of the numbers. <laughs> Soccer fans came out in droves to watch Team USA in bars across the county. We'll bring you fan reaction from the game. At Cali Breakfast, there's a menu waiting for you and your pet. What these dogs are digging into. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A man accused of opening fire at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs could face murder and hate crime charges. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The DA's office says it is still reviewing the case before filing formal charges. Five people were killed in Saturday night's shooting. Tonight we have names to go with the faces of those who lost their lives. Kelly Loving, Raymond Green Vance, Ashley Paw, Daniel Aston and Derek Rump were all killed at Club Q on Saturday night. 18 people were injured. Investigators say 17 of them suffered gunshot wounds. And tonight we are learning more about the accused shooter and his connection to a local state assemblyman. But first, CBS 8's Richard Allen is live in Hillcrest tonight where our local LGBTQ community and allies are gathered for a vigil. Richard. Well, Carlo and Marcella, a community meeting is about to get underway here at Rich's Nightclub on University Avenue in Hillcrest. You can see dozens of people behind me here. You can actually see on the screen above me, they've been showing pictures of some of the victims from the nightclub shooting in Colorado Springs. Now, this is bringing together the entire community. The mayor's going to be here. The police chief is here. And we also just spoke with longtime LGBTQ activist Nicole Murray Ramirez. This is what his message is tonight. They are our safe place. They are our together community gatherings. And they're under attack. We're not going anywhere. We're still going to go to our gay bars. And we're not going back into the closet. That is our message to America, that you can hate us, attack us, and even kill us. But we're not going back. A very defiant message from Nicole Ramirez tonight. Now, as I mentioned, Mayor Todd Gloria is here, as is San the San Diego Police Department, along with Chief Nislight, here to talk about safety in the wake of the shooting that killed five people and injured at least 25 in Colorado Springs. We also understand that Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs will also be here taking part in the rally. Now, they'll be gathering here at Riches, then going up to the Pride flagpole, not too far from here, where there will be a candlelight vigil. Now, already Mayor Gloria has called for increased patrols here in Hill as a precaution. Chief Nislite says that that is already in effect. Now, as we mentioned, the folks gathering here will be marching down university, gathering at the flagpole where that where they will uh, have their message that hate will not be tolerated here in San Diego or anywhere in the United States or the world for that matter. Now, this meeting is getting underway right now. As we mentioned, they're going to have some speakers here, including the police chief and the mayor from here at around 630. They will be marching up University Avenue to the flagpole where that candlelight vigil will take place. And of course, this is open to the public. Carlo and Marcella. All right, Richard, thank you. It is not clear if the accused shooter ever lived in San Diego, but his mother did and his grandfather still does. In fact, he's currently an elected official. CBS 8 Steve Price takes a closer look at this local connection. CBS 8 News has confirmed through a family member that East County Assembly member Randy Vopel, who has a district office in this building here in Santee, is the grandfather of the suspected shooter in Colorado, Anderson Aldridge. While it's not clear just how close their relationship was, we can confirm the two definitely spent time together. On his daughter's Facebook page, we found a photo posted in 2014 that shows Vopel and Aldridge together at a family event. We stopped by Vopel's office Monday, hoping to learn more about their relationship and see if he had a statement to make about the shooting. But the door was locked and multiple attempts to reach him and his staff through calls and emails went unanswered. <coughs> Doorbell video shows Aldrich being taken into custody last year for allegedly threatening his mom with a homemade bomb, a situation that forced the evacuation of their entire Colorado neighborhood. But for reasons that are still unclear, all charges against him were dropped. 
The 22-year-old now faces multiple felony charges, including five counts of first-degree murder. I lost friends. The shooting happened late Saturday night at Club Q in Colorado Springs. Witnesses say Aldrich walked in the front door and immediately started firing. All we heard was just him kind of gradually going through the club and just shooting as he was kind of like walking. It was almost like target practice really for him. Minutes after the shooting started, at least two customers confronted Aldrich, risking their own lives to subdue him until police arrived and arrested him. Aldrich sustained some type of injury and at last check was still hospitalized. Police say they have tried to interview him multiple times, but so far he has not made any statements. The family member we spoke with doesn't live in Colorado and wasn't close to Aldrich, but knew he needed help after the incident last year and added that he was in an unstable situation living with his mother. Our source ended the conversation by saying, quote, my heart is broken for these lives lost. Steve Price, CBS 8. Steve mentioned the accused shooter's grandfather's California Assemblyman Randy Vopel, a Republican who represents District 71 in East County. After redistricting, he lost in the November elections to a fellow incumbent Republican. CBS 8's David Godfordson takes a closer look at Vopel's voting record on gun rights and LGBTQ issues. I knocked on State Assemblyman Randy Vopel's front door Monday at his home in Santee, but nobody answered. We were trying to get a response from the 72-year-old Vietnam vet to the mass shooting in Colorado, allegedly committed by his biological grandson from a previous marriage. 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich is accused of killing five people and wounding more than a dozen Saturday night at an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. Assemblyman Vopel is a Republican who has represented District 71 in the East County for the past six years. Though he lost the election in November to a fellow Republican and his term ends December 5th. Vopel was the mayor of Santee at the time of the Santana High School mass shooting where two people died. He spoke at a prayer service in Hillcrest just days after the shooting in 2001. Right now, Santee is weak. You are strong. We appreciate all the help and all the love and all the caring that we've seen. Vopel has a long history of voting against gun control laws at the state assembly. For example, he opposed bills that would prohibit the marketing of firearms to minors, limit the manufacturing of ghost guns, and allow individuals to sue firearm manufacturers. On LGBTQ legislation, Vopel also opposed requiring retailers to have a gender-neutral section, privacy rights for gender-affirming care, and recognizing non-binary as an official legal gender. Now, I reached out to Vopel's chief of staff seeking comment, but she did not respond to my messages. Uh, I did notice when I was at his house in Santee, there were quite a few business cards left on his front porch, so a lot of people are trying to get a hold of him. Uh, David, do we have any indication that the alleged shooter spent any time in San Diego County with his grandfather? It's hard to tell. He's only age 22. I can tell you that I checked criminal records, and he does not appear to have any criminal record in San Diego County. Uh, public records do show that his mother had previous addresses maybe two decades ago in Cardiff-by-the-Sea and El Cajon. David Gofferson reporting for us live. Thanks, David. Tonight, new numbers obtained by CBS 8 show a huge jump in the number of mental health calls for police assistance at schools during the pandemic. We're talking specifically about cases where officers responded and ended up removing a student from campus to get them help. In this Learning Curve report, our Shannon Handy has a breakdown and what experts are saying about it. San Diego police responded to 17 calls during the 2019-2020 school year. Last year, that number nearly doubled, but the CEO of San Diego Youth Services tells me those statistics only scratch the surface. Open the school! Since the start of the pandemic, we've heard from parents about the social and emotional impact it's had on their kids. Multiple times, my kids have been upset, 
Depressed. Studies, including one conducted by the CDC, found mental health issues increase significantly among the youth. Now, CBC has uncovered even more data showing just how significant the problem is here locally. During the 2019-2020 school year, San Diego police removed 16 students at the local elementary, middle, and high schools in San Diego and placed them on mental health holds. They removed an additional one student from Palomar College. Despite local schools going remote, SCPD responded to 10 calls the following year. Last year, nearly double from two years prior, and 30 students were taken in the midst of a mental health crisis. I think what we've seen is kids have increased anxiety, uh, increased depression. Walter Phillips is the CEO of San Diego Youth Services, a nonprofit which offers prevention, intervention, and housing support for young people. He says while the calls to SCPD have increased, it's important to know all of the other kids who have been struggling with mental health issues, not just those who had to be physically removed from schools. We're just one nonprofit in the community doing work with schools. We served almost 11,000 youth and families through our prevention, intervention, and treatment programs. The SDPD data also shows calls were spread evenly amongst age groups, with high schools having reported only one more mental health call than elementary school students and two more for children in middle schools. That doesn't surprise Phillips, who says oftentimes young kids respond to stresses at home. The families are disrupted because of economic losses, um, and then all the issues around health uh, issues and uncertainty for these kids. State Superintendent Tony Thurman has pledged to put more counselors inside schools, but Phillips warns there's a national shortage, saying in the future he hopes more people will go into the profession. In the meantime, he says both families and schools need to be proactive, know what signs to look out for, and don't hesitate to talk to your kids, even if you think they may be too young. It's not just about reading, writing, arithmetic, we also have to attend the emotional needs of these kids while they're in school. If you would like to be connected to youth mental health services, just log on to CBS8.com and click on this story. For CBS8, I'm Shannon Handy. Thanks, Shannon. Also on that story link Shannon just mentioned, you can see a list of schools that San Diego Police Department responded to, as well as how the state and San Diego Unified are responding. Still ahead tonight, is it unsafe to give water to a newborn baby? We verify. Plus, with only a few days to go before Thanksgiving, how to enjoy a zero waste feast this year. We got those twinkling lights out there. Also talking about a current temperature of 61 degrees for downtown. We've had some high clouds for today. We're seeing those as we go into tomorrow and Santa Ana winds set to return. All those details ahead. And up next, excited soccer fans pack pubs to watch the USA take on Wales in the first round of the World Cup.